Hello there, you beautiful Dragon City gamer. So today, rather than having an outright tier list or anything like that, for any newer players or just any players in general that are just sort of confused as to what constitutes a good, air quotes, dragon, today I thought I'd go through what some of the better dragons in the game are. These are the dragons that people will, say, use in Master Tier. They'll rank up to level 70, full empowerment, and uh, these dragons, quite a lot of them, are going to be very much uh, not easy to get free to play. It's possible if you play for a long time, of course, but um, there are a few dragons that for quite a few reasons, either having like really good primaries and really good skills or quite a few different reasons, might be considered some of the best in the game. And so the first mention of some of the best dragons in the game are going to be, of course, the VIP Heroics because these dragons are heroics and heroics are of course the strongest dragons in the game technically and these dragons also have some really nice skills so for example high voodoo vampire primary magic and even though you'll probably end up duping a lot of his elements he's a really good dragon overall we've got high master karma of course which some people myself included are kind of against karmas just because of how random they can be but when they do actually proc the block, they can be insanely good. So High Master Karma, another one of those VIP ones. High Corrupted Time, another really, really solid dragon, because High Corrupted Time is basically a heroic vampire titan with uh, obviously that insane win skill. So yeah, it, th these dragons in general are of course 500 orb dragons. You'd expect them to be some of the best in the game because they're 500 orbs. They're not easy to get free to play. But, of course, we do currently have the events on in the game, and from the Descent of the Supreme, if you open up those chests, like the Supreme chest, you have a chance of getting any of these dragons, and some people have been getting them. So you can get lucky and get one of these, and then just use Joker Orbs to empower them afterwards, or do some trading. Lots of trading. But they're the VIP dragons, and then, of course, we've got the new High Ascended dragon, but I don't really want to mention him because he's only really usable if you have his skin on. And even then, I don't know, I think I'd prefer almost, yeah, I think I'd prefer any of the other options, to be honest with you, to him. That's just my personal preference. It doesn't mean he's a bad dragon by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know. I just, um, I'm against skill skins, personally. I want them gone. I don't like the idea of skill skins at all, so I can't. I can't in good faith suggest this dragon to you, I'm sorry. He does have a very good primary though. Dream is quite a nice one to have. But yeah, I don't like him, so you, he's not getting a direct mention. Anyway, outside of those 500 orb dragons, there are some other really good options. An example of that would be, say, the Corrupted Titans. In particular, it would be like Corrupted Legend and Corrupted Chaos. Main reason being they've got a nice primary element, and they are Vampire Titans. Of course, they are still going to be the same category as some of the other dragons, Cat 10s, but, you know, in general, just having a dragon of this caliber that can shield, then it can heal up really, really solid, and having those as their primaries is gonna, is gonna do you well. I will say that Corrupted Legend works in terms of his elements as well, because you may end up, like, not having, say, Sea and Earth, on one of your end game teams if you're using like super super vip dragons or like 200 orb dragons so i think he fits in into quite a lot of teams but depends on what you take really then the other really notable dragons that a lot of people will tend to use in say master tier are going to be the dual dragons i know that a lot of people prefer dual perception over dual parliament and that is mainly because of their second skill but I have to say, out of all the dragons, Jewel, Perception, and Parliament are the reason these two dragons, even though they're legendary, are so good, is mainly for the skill down here that you'll see. It's going to be Time Steal, and I mean Jewel Rebound is really insanely good as well. But like, if we click on Time Steal here, you'll see what the description is. It is an extra turn, and it's multiple hits. So this attack deals multiple hits and gives an extra turn. It is basically like um, Sinful's Ephyxia, if you've ever seen it, 
but then it also deals multiple hits. It's nuts. It's uh, This is the reason why these two dragons, along with them obviously being good in general, and Cat 10s, it's why they are so damn good. But I will say that the fire skill on dual perception is normally viewed as better because it's more reliable than for um, dual parliament. But one other thing to remember is that legendaries do also get nice boosts from empowerment as well. So even though, in theory, heroics are supposed to be the biggest, baddest, biggest boys in this game, you can still use, say, Cat 10 Legends and they will still be very good when you've empowered them to max rank. So, even though you see them as Legends, they're still pretty good. Now, I'm going to mention the Walking Dead Dragons as well, in particular, say, Negan, or some of the others. There's Daryl as well, there's also Michonne, for the people that want to use Michonne, and these dragons... Even though the one downside to these dragons is the fact that they are Cat 9 dragons, so they're not going to be quite as strong as, say, Cat 10 dragons, but the Walking Dead dragons, they have an insane attack called Bunker, and if we scroll down and click on Bunker, this can be a really, really good thing. It depends on your team, really, because this is more of a defensive element, but essentially it deals damage and reduces the damage dealt to the user and allies for several turns. And basically, you get to attack, put up a shield, and it will block the damage, or some of the damage, for, you know, a few turns. And that is really, really good if we're talking about, like, highest tier ranking, because you could have, like, two really insanely good dragons, plus a The Walking Dead dragon, and then you can just go ham with your best dragons. Of course, Negan also has Vampire Bat, which is like having a vampire with Bunker as well, which can be nice. And then like we've got Michonne that's got a multi-hit attack along with Bunker. And the multi-hit attack on um, Michonne, for example, is just a one-turn cooldown. So turn cooldowns on these dragons are important as well, and they can also make a big difference to your teams. And it's why some people do actually opt to take the Walking Dead dragons, even if they are Cat 9 dragons. Now, we've also, of course, just got the basic Karmas and the Corrupted Titans as well, which are also 200 Orb Dragons. We've also got things like the other Ascended Dragons and all of the other mainly Divine Pass Dragons that have been released over time. But Karmas, like I said, I'm not a fan of them because I don't like how unreliable they can be. Like, sure, when they do block and crit based on the block, it can be insanely good, but I don't like using things that aren't consistent, usually. But at the same time, if you are going to pick a Karma, which some people do want to use just because they like to be really annoying, then one of the Karmas that's got a nice primary, such as Ambition Karma, could be a nice pickup. I mean, it's debatable with the Ancient Primaries, they're going to get less and less useful over time, but having Soul as a primary, and then of course we've also got the other Karma Dragon, which is the pure primary, Grace Karma, which could be another good option if you don't have another pure primary dragon. But, you know, we've got Fragmented Karma as well, which is, of course, Chaos Primary, which we've got a few of the good dragons or decent dragons that have Chaos Primary, so you may end up either duping that element a lot or just avoiding having so many Chaos Primary element dragons, because you don't want to have the same primary element on your team if you can help it because then they'll all have the same weakness which is not ideal of course and plus if you're only using three main dragons you don't want to get ruined in terms of arena but you'll need tons of dragons in arena anyway now the other dragons that we've got that i will mention here are the more free to play like really easily acquired free to play options because uh yeah i think every single one of the other options <laughs> was either Either borderline getting into pay to win territory, or you'll have to spend tons of gems on them, generally, unless you get lucky. But Hexed Vampire, I know that they say that she's rank one on this website. That's because they're using a very specific set of ranking criteria. And although I understand 8,600 damage would put it at rank one, that's for this basic calculation. In practical usage, Hexed is not going to be ranked one. Don't get me wrong, she's a good dragon, and that's why she's being mentioned here. But 
That doesn't necessarily mean that in her practical usage she's actually rank 1. But Hexed has a good primary element, she has a multi-hit attack, and of course she has the HP um, Zuck from her Vampire Leech. So she's still a really nice dragon to have. Of course she's going to be weak to primal dragons, but for a very easily acquired free-to-play dragon, like you can pick up Hexed basically from your first summoning happy hour. Or if you somehow just have tons of orbs and essence to trade with, like if you've got other vampires and such, you can basically get hexed within your first month of play. Definitely. Easily. So that's why it's such a good pickup for newer players. And they're still usable later on. I think it's just over time there have been some other massive powerhouses like, say, the Perception Dragons that sort of outshine her because, yes, I get it, Hex Agony is wonderful, but... <laughs> <laughs> time steal? Time steal? Anyway, uh, you could say that Hex is similar to that in a sense, but then of course we've also got Simful, which is sort of similar to Hex in terms of categorization, but another Chaos Primary Element Dragon, which again, that's not a bad one to have as a primary, it's just there are some dragons, like some of the others mentioned before, that will have an upgraded version of Simful's Ephyxia, but Ephyxia itself is still a really, really good ability, so it's still one that's definitely worth picking up, I think. And then we've also got Blood God, and now I would say starting out that without any perks, I personally prefer Simful, but when they get perked up, you know, Blood God can be really, really nice, because if you didn't know about Blood God compared to Simful, he does have Blood Eclipse, and Blood Eclipse, as it says here, damages all opponents and heals all allies and without perks this is kind of weak but then when you think about adding perks to dragons and same with some of these other dragons some of their skills might not seem incredibly good but if you add all of your perks to them that's when they start to become really scary and blood god is one of those that benefits a lot from perks so yeah that is why blood god is still a dragon that you can pick up and again primary element chaos and he does have a legendary element as well, in case you go against any primals. And the reason that some of these dragons are really good on top of their skills and on top of their category rating is just that over time, you'll notice that there has been a sort of power creep in this game. And it is true, there has been a power creep. And the way that we can sort of take a look at this is... Well, I guess it's kind of unfair comparing it to a 500 orb dragon, but I just want to use an example of heroics in general, because you can realistically use any heroic in the game and they're sort of okay. Like some are going to have primary elements that maybe you don't want or aren't considered quite as good because they're weak to certain elements. But if we look at the first heroic, which was High Fenrir, if we take a look at the actual damage, and this is the damage on this dragon after it's been trained, because we don't look at the basic attack damage usually. It's better to look at the trainable attack skills, because that's the maximum amount of damage that this dragon can do. And if you compare the damage on this dragon's attacks to some of the recent dragons, you'll see why a dragon like this isn't really recommended because we've got high femory here these are his attacks 1050 damage on snowstorm 1500 on pure light 1400 on astro and 1350 on tesla and now without seeing anything to compare that might it's like what are you trying to show me now if we look at say high master karma we're gonna look at him and also take it to effect or take into account the fact that he has skills on top of this. Karma Yin is 2000. Trained Powerful Wind is 2400. Original Pain is 2000. Karma Yang is 2000. So you compare those two damage stats here, there is an insane amount of power difference. But, like I said, it's not really fair to compare, say, you know, a regular heroic to a 500 orb heroic. I get it. So, what we're going to do is we could look at, say, one of the recent examples for a heroic. So, let's look at High Toy Town, which is actually a pretty decent recent heroic. Same with High Drowsy, because they've got nice primaries, nice other elements as well. 
But if we go and scroll down to Hydrowsy's attack damage here, you will notice a very big difference still between High Toy Town and High Fenrir. Because, again, we'll go back to High Fenrir. We had a lowest attack of 1,050 and a highest of 1,500. On High Toy Town, we have a minimum 1,350 and a highest of 2,500 damage on that attack skill. So, just comparing an, like one of the OG heroics to one of the new ones, there is a ton of power creep that has come in. And now, of course, the important thing about making a team is picking dragons that, you know, have unique elements or just have good skills or just have really nice damage, which most heroics do because, you know, they cat 11 dragons. But you have to take into account when you're looking at dragons what their overall trainable attack skill strength is as well. Because, again, comparing 2,500 damage to... 1,050 or even 1,500 being the max before to 2,500. That's a 1,000 damage, essentially, difference between those two skills. So it's something to really keep in mind when you are thinking about why are these people saying this dragon is good or why are you saying this one isn't. It might be down to the primary elements and also those trainable attack strengths overall. So, yeah, there is a huge amount of power creep that's happened in Dragon City over the years. It doesn't mean that you can't use some of the older heroics. You definitely still can. It's just be very mindful if you, say, want to use some of the earlier heroics. I mean, we could look at High Tension right now. And if we go to his skills, you'll see that without him being trained, 550 damage on train. Blah! Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And you know... Maybe they will update these dragons one day to make them a little bit more in line, but I just, I, d I doubt it. <laughs> I, I doubt it, to be honest with you. Like, we've got our wonderful, beautiful Hydrowsy dragon, which again has a 2,400 damage attack, 2,000 damage attack, and then two 1,350 attacks, and that's fully trained. But again, really nice selection of elements on Hydrowsy. So Hydrowsy is another decent dragon. Maybe not one of the best ever, because, you know, doesn't have any insane skills or anything, but it's still a good dragon. And most heroics are good, but there are some that are going to be better than others for a lot of the reasons that I've mentioned today. But those are a general list of some of the best dragons in the game. Again, this isn't like a tier list video. I didn't go from like, this is rank one, this is rank two, this is rank 15, because... I would want to do more research in Master Tier myself before I'd come up with any sort of conclusive tier list. But if you are a newer player or someone in general that's sort of confused about the current state of the game, these are some of the better options out there in general. Again, if you say, Oh my god, you said this was the best dragon ever. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I know someone's going to say I said that. I did not say that, okay? Um... But, like, High Corrupted Time, I remember when he was thought of as sort of a noob bait dragon to buy into. And that was mainly because he couldn't be used in the majority of the, uh, the Master Tier arenas, back with the old Master Tier arena. I actually don't know how many of the current Master Tier arenas he could be used in. But, you know, it would be interesting to know exactly because I don't know what all of the restrictions are anymore. I say that I'm going to be ranking down personally all the way down to zero, ideally, so that I can go through every single one of these new arena tiers. But, yeah, there are a lot of different reasons and a lot of different factors that go into deciding which dragon is good and which one isn't. But the TLDR for making a good team is pick a good high damage dragon, ideally with a really good skill, and uh, pick a team of dragons with as many unique elements as you can, while also picking some really good ones. That is my general advice to you. And if you manage to get any of like the Walking Dead dragons, you've potentially got an insanely good defensive dragon there. So, um, best of luck with all of your dragon collecting, which is a whole different problem in itself, actually getting these dragons, of course. But who knows, maybe you'll get lucky out of these current chests or Black Friday when it comes up, or you could just buy some of their orbs in the orb shop and summon them. There are lots of different ways to get some of these dragons.